What's up YouTube, Scott Scotty Tradition back with another video. Um, thought I'd take uh, some time to do my 2021 year in review video. Um, these are kind of always fun to do, just going through what you picked up throughout the entire year and kind of just reliving the year a little bit. So um, I don't have a ton of volume that I picked up this year, but I think I still made some uh, cool pickups throughout the year. So I'm going to go through those. Um, so in January, um, I did as if I had some eBay bucks to spend from the prior couple months and ended up picking up this card. It's the 1955 Bowman Bobby Dillon, uh, who uh, just made the Pro Football Hall of Fame this past year and um, got it in the grade of a 7. Uh, looks pretty nice. Nice looking 7. And I just love this card. Um, always wanted this card. Uh, it never really, really fit any of the sets I was working on. Um, but, you know, I sort of made this year not about necessarily adding to sets, but more so just picking up cards that I liked, that I wa that I wanted, that fit my collection. And, you know, I've always liked the just the, the appeal of this card. And so I think you'll see it as a common thread throughout the year of different things I picked up. Um, so ha real happy to get that one. Picked that back up in January. Um, like I said, it was an eBay Bucks pickup since I had eBay Bucks to spend, so... Didn't actually spend anything on the card. Um, and then, um, honestly, I didn't pick up anything until March. So um, I did take a little break from collecting to start the year. So um, I, I think my last pickup was like December 6th or something like that of 2020. And then I didn't pick up anything, on, you know, because the Dylan I picked up with eBay Bucks. Um, then I didn't pick up anything until March, which was this next card that I'll show. Um, but yeah, it had been like a good three to four month hiatus from the hobby and, you know, as everybody knows, the hobby just kind of got crazy around that time and, you know, the hype was full bore and it seemed like a good idea at the time for me to stay away from all that stuff. So it was a good time to, to kind of just reflect on the collection that I already had in place. Um, but another card I picked up that I'd always wanted was this one, the 51 Bowman Emlyn Tennell rookie card. Um, he's a Hall of Fame uh, corner. Uh, played most of his career with the New York Giants, but did end his career with the Packers. Um, he was one of the players that Vince Lombardi brought over from the Giants to kind of show a young Packers team how to play football back in 1958. when uh, That was Lombardi's first year with the Packers. Um, just a beautiful example. This is a uh, near-mint example of the card. And, you know, Emlyn Tennell's story is pretty cool, too. He was in the U.S. Coast Guard during World War II. Um, actually saved a man, uh, causing burns to his own uh, arms and hands. So really great story um, if you want to read up on that. But um, definitely a fan of this guy's story on and off the field. And um, I like his connection to the Packers as well as the Giants. So usually I don't have a lot of Hall of Fame cards of non-Packers, but um, this is one that I'm happy to have. So got that in the SGC 7. Um, then April came along and I did, um, I had a, a little bit of extra funds at the time and I did sort of buy into the hype a little bit. Um, <laughs> it wasn't at the peak of the, of the madness, but you know, things had started to come down a little bit and I thought it was a good time to get some of these cards. And one card um, I'm still doing all right on, but the other two have kind of lost a fair amount of value over that time. I'm still happy I have the cards, and, you know, and I still do believe in both the players, so I do think the prices will rebound a bit. But um, just kind of another example of just don't buy into the hype. Uh, you will save yourself a lot of money in the end, and you'll be much happier as a collector if you stay away from the hype. Um, I thought it had peaked, and I thought it was actually on its way down, but it turns out it had a, quite a bit way further down to go um, and they're both modern cards as well so um, but they are cards that I, I wanted and I, I wanted to take a chance on getting them if they were to rebound up again too quick so um, so yeah there were uh, three main uh, pickups I bought the first one in April is the uh, Nikola Jokic uh, prism rookie card uh, this one's definitely come down quite a bit I think I must have paid 450 plus maybe even 500 for this card and i think it's around a 150 to 200 dollar card now so you know these and you know Jokic, the 2015 prism is not nearly as prevalent as the like 2019 2020 prism like the zion and jaw year 
where you have like 32,000 Zion Williamson graded, which is just an absurd number. Uh, this isn't that. Um, the pops on the Nikola Jokic's are quite a bit less. So I don't. I think it's important when you're talking about prism basketball to not kind of group all prism basketball all together. Um, the Zions and everything past that year is just off the charts as far as the pop goes. But um, the Jokic actually isn't that bad as far as the pop on you know graded number goes. And you know I have some other prism rookies as well from like 2013 prism, like the Giannis rookie. Um, the, for instance, I think there have been like something like you know 4,000 or 4,500 Giannis's graded total, and there's like 32,000 Zion's graded. So there's a huge difference in population. So I think a lot of the earlier Prism rookies of basketball still have are pretty good buys, and um, and Jokic is no uh, different. I think he's having another MVP quality year. Um, I think at the end of the day, it might be between Jokic and Giannis and Steph Curry. Um, and maybe Durant uh, for MVP. So he's right in that conversation again. Just a great all-around basketball player. So definitely wanted to get a card of his before it really took off. Um, and then here's another one that has come down a little bit since I picked it up. This is the uh, Patrick Mahomes Prism rookie card. Um, it had gotten as high as I want to say maybe three or four thousand dollars at the peak, and. It had gone down to about 2500 That's kind of when I pulled the trigger. But since then, it's even <laughs> cut itself in half again. It's kind of around that $1,200, you know, 1000 to 1200 mark uh, for a 9. So um, probably should have held off a little bit longer on the Mahomes. But I'm still happy with the purchase, and I think he's still a good quarterback. So um, happy to have it. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's sometimes it's, it is tough, tough to judge the market one way or the other. Um, and then another uh, modern card I picked up was the 2009 top Steph Curry rookie. Um, just love everything about his game, obviously. Uh, and he ended up breaking the three-point record this year, taking it from Ray Allen. Um, I actually didn't realize that at the time, that, I, that that was coming up. But this card actually has stayed the same and maybe has even gone up a few hundred since I picked it up. So this one ended up being an okay purchase, even though I purchased it at, you know, around the peak of the market. Um, this is a pretty nice example too. Um, obviously, the back black backgrounds are tough on these, and I think this is. Uh, I think I got a nice one. Um, really, not much white, if any, showing at all. So I wanted to try to get a higher end nine, and I think I did that. So just love his game. Love the way he transcended basketball and kind of changed the game. Um, there are kids out there practicing their three point shots all because Steph Curry kind of changed the game and made it kind of cool and classy to shoot the three. Threes with style. So um, I think he will go down as being a huge part of basketball in general. So happy to have his rookie card. And just, again, love his style on and off the court. Um, and there was one other card I picked up in April. It's the uh, Drew Holiday rookie. Of course, the Bucks were... Did, had an amazing year. They won the NBA title, which is awesome after 50 years as a Bucks fan. Um, and I did not have the Drew Holiday rookie card, so it's from that 09 to, you know, it's from that it's from the same year as the Steph Curry rookie card. Um, also, James Harden's rookie year as well. But um, the SGC version it was actually just going there for so much more cheap. I think I got this card for like, you know, 25 or 30 bucks. So it was pretty much a no-brainer to pick up at that price. Um, so happy to add that one, my boy Drew Holiday. Um, and then uh, in May, um, I did attend a card show. Uh, there was the Wisconsin Dells card show, and um, was a lot of fun. Um, didn't really go in with any expectations of what I wanted to pick up, but I did end up picking up a couple cards. Again, this is sort of near peak of the market, so here's a... Donovan Mitchell uh, optic rookie I picked up um, had a great year for the Jazz and still is a great player and love his game. So uh, Donovan Mitchell um, picked this up in a ten. Um, again, this is a card that has come down a little bit since I picked it up around that time, as you know, so much modern basketball has. Let's 
see if I can set up some people in the background here. There we go. Um, and then another card I ended up picking up at the show was this uh, Harmon Killebrew rookie card from 55 uh, Tops. I already had the uh, Clemente rookie card, already had the Kofex. So this was the, the other big one that I needed. And I picked this up from uh, Tommy Larson at the Wisconsin Dells card show. Beautiful example here, um, graded a six. Beautiful color on the card. And this is one that has actually stayed about the same in price from where I picked it up, um, as opposed to coming down near the peak. Um, so it's kind of interesting. You see in a lot of the modern cards are the ones that are coming down in value. But, you know, vintage that was picked up around that same time is either staying stable or going up in value. I just find that interesting. So I was real happy to knock that one off the list. So these two in front are the Wisconsin Dells card show pickup. Um, and then I got a order back from Garrett, card cutter from PSA DNA. It was a full order submission for a couple autographs I had sent out. And um, I did get a few more back, but I'll just show this one. This was my favorite one I got back. The 85 Nike Promo James Lofton card. Uh, this is a card that actually B. Roth 6, Brian, had sent my way. And I ended up sending it off to James to get signed and came back. Looks great. I love the blue marker along the blue and white clouds in the back. Just a beautiful card. Um, and then once I got it back from uh, Mr. Lofton, um, he had also signed a couple of rookie cards for me as well. Um, sent them in for encapsulation and came back. Looks amazing. So super happy to have that one. Just a very cool piece. There, we'll show James a little better. Um, and I did, did get a few other auto cards back too, but we're not going to show those in this video. But they were more just for my Team Hall of Fame autograph version of the set. Um, then in June, uh, there was two pickups that I made. Uh, and the first one was my first boxing card edition. The 35 United Tobacco Joe Lewis. Um, this card's only about Pop 50, so there's not a ton that have even been graded. Um, it's an early Joe Lewis card, so love his story, love his place in history with World War II and the boxing of Max Schmeling. Um, so just I love his historical uh, significance and his story. Um, one of the best boxers of all time. Beautiful card. Not another example of a card that I purchased that has not gone down in price. Um, and then um, another card that I've always wanted to add was the uh, Play Ball Joe DiMaggio, 39. And picked it up in an SGC1. Um, obviously, the centering on this card is amazing. Um, you can see the light, light crease right there. It really doesn't take away from the card. And, man, just a beautiful example. You can actually, if you look closely, you can actually see the word Yankees. I think somebody tried to almost inscribe it there or maybe they wrote over the top of it with a piece of paper and it kind of went on the whiteness of his uniform. Um, so pretty funny. Um, the card looks great. No paper loss. Anything like that. Just one of the better examples of a one that you'll find for eye appeal. Just looks really nice. So Joe DiMaggio does indeed dunk his donuts. Um, and then um, in July, added this uh, 57 Tops Al Carmichael in the grade of an 8 to the uh, 57 Tops Packers team set. Still need two cards for that set, but it's been uh, slow going and slim pickings for high grade vintage football. There just is not a lot of it on the market. But was real happy to finally take one off the list anyways. Not a super expensive card, but one that um, I did need for the team set. Um, and then August came around and, you know, had a wonderful time at the National, of course. Uh, it was great catching up with so many people. Um, <laughs> only made one purchase at the National, which is kind of funny, but uh, here it is. This is the uh, 59 Tops uh, cello pack, Jerry Kramer on the top. So um, I, I literally walked around the National for three days 
and only picked up this one item. Take a look at the back, you can see uh, the sealed pack. This is the only graded example with Jerry Kramer on the top. Um, these cello packs are pretty rare to begin with. As far as PSA graded uh, versions, to have one with Kramer on top was really cool. It goes really well in my collection. You can kind of see a side view there of the thickness of the slab itself. So, but yeah, man, super happy to have this. And it's one of those items that you see and you're like, yep, I'm going to add that to the collection. Just a matter of when and how much. <laughs> Um, and then that, yeah, like I said, that's the only thing I ended up picking up at the national, which is uh, pretty funny for being there for three days. But, um, most of my time there is all about catching up with uh, great friends and having a good time. But when I got back from the national <laughs> within a week or two, um, a friend of mine, Jay Stottlemyre one, Josh, um, was moving this card to help fund another card, which he did pick up an amazing Honus Wagner at the time. And, uh, was just super happy to add this particular card here. The 41 Playball Joe DiMaggio, it's a card that I've, I've always wanted. I saw several at the National, um, but you know, Josh gave me this for a really good price and very nicely centered, looks pretty darn clean, to be honest, for a 2.5 and it's all I could have really ever hoped for. <laughs> so patience does pay off. I passed on several at the National and Within a week or two after being home, um, the right one, the right opportunity came up. So, just a beautiful example of the card. I think I'll set up Kramer back here, and I'll put the two DiMaggio's there. Um. All right, then uh, let's see here. So that was in August, and then we went to September. Um, these are the only non-slabbed cards I'm going to show, but I did pick up a couple of uh, proofs of Fred Cohn. Uh, of course, Fred Cohn is a member of the Packers Team Hall of Fame, and I had the opportunity to pick up a couple of proof cards uh, that are involved in the printing process of his rookie card from 52 Bowman, and I think they're really cool. You can see the blank, blank back. These are the first proofs I've owned, so... Another just another reason why 2021 was unique as far as the collection goes, but beautiful examples of the card. Um, and then also, uh, definitely a card I did not think I was going to pick up in 2021, but you kind of got to grab cards like this when you see them. It's the uh, own, uh, excuse me, OA Tops Brett Favre with a Lombardi ghost photo in the back. You can see the fo the Lombardi silhouette up here above his shoulder. And this is a super short print, and they did not come out in a lot of packs. I do wonder how many of these are still sitting out in the wild. The pop is relatively low. I think it's in the teens or 20s as far as how many have been graded total. Um, how many have been given a 9.5 is even quite a bit less. So so I had the opportunity to grab one of these and was very happy to do so. A card you don't see that often come up for sale. I, I hadn't seen one in a couple of years, to be honest. But real happy to have it. Um, and then I picked up a couple of Lake to Lake cards. A really cool uh, regional set. The Sheboygan Lake to Lake Dairy Company. And uh, I showed an Emlyn Tunnell earlier. And here's another one. Um, this is his only card in a Packers uniform. And it's from this obscure regional Lake to Lake set. And this is just a gorgeous example. SGC graded. 7.5 is the highest grade graded SGC example. So super cool. You can take a quick look at the back of the cards. Just super happy to add anything Emlyn Tunnell. Um, and then also picked up the uh, Jerry Kramer. Um, along with the Tunnell, the Kramer is a short print in that set. So... Uh, just for reference, short prints compared to regular prints are more scarce on a ten, about a 10 to 1 ratio. So they are very hard to find. These ca uh, often came stapled to milk cartons, so they're very condition sensitive. 
I think if you collected them all, you had the opportunity to send away for like a whole set or like a booklet of them. So uh, this is only an EX5, but I think it is still the top graded example by SGC. These Kramers did not hold very well. But very, very excited to get that as well. Um, and then last but not least here, I picked up four cards in October. Um, and first is the uh, 87 Tops Tim Harris rookie. Tim Harris was recently named to the Packers Team Hall of Fame this fall. And this card goes to that set uh, along with Greg Jennings. I'm still looking for the Greg Jennings rookie card. I did not have that one on hand. Nor do I want to grade it for $100 per card. So I'm going to be waiting for that one for just a little bit yet. Um, but I was certainly happy to find that one. Um, and then um, picked up a few cards at auction here. Got the 05 Tops Chrome Brett Favre Refractor. Um, just a cool looking card. I'm making the touchdown signal. Um, I didn't have a ton of Favre non-rookie cards. So being able to add this one and this one in 2021 was pretty cool examples from the year. They're both Tops and Tops Chrome and just great looking cards to be honest. Um, and then uh, two more to go here. Um, this is a uh, 05 Bowman Chrome Ryan Braun rookie card in a gold refractor. Um, obviously, this used to be like a really big card. Um, Braun will still go down as one of the top top three, top four brewers of all time. So important for my collection. And these are numbered out of 50, as you can see. BGS 9.5. Um, I got this one for basically a steal, so. And it looks really great with the Brewers colors, I think. Um, and last but not least, in addition to the Packers uh, Team Hall of Fame set, uh, 63 cons, Ron Kostelnik, who was a uh, defensive tackle and is in the Packers Hall of Fame. Uh, this card was recently added to the Team Hall of Fame set, so... Um, these cons wieners cards can be tough and um, this one I purchased already graded uh, there's not a lot of people grading this kind of stuff right now at these prices so um, it was a great opportunity to grab one and glad that I did so 2021 uh, definitely not as big a volume for me this year as in years past but I think I still picked up a lot of cool stuff stuff that I like stuff that I'm happy with and I really ended up having a great year uh, collecting. Um, I did sell some things as well earlier this year. Um, I think I let go of a lot of like 80s football and uh, some 90s stuff that I had, football, um, just due to the plentiful nature of those cards. And, and I moved into some other stuff that I really liked. So um, it's been a great year, great 2021. Hope to um, tackle some other stuff in 2022 as grading companies, you know, hopefully open back up at a more reasonable rate and can, you know, get some of my sets finished up and whatnot. So, um, hope you enjoyed the recap. Um, we'll talk to you again soon and thanks everybody for watching.